This is Mia. She is the cutest kitten in the world. She actually does love to sleep like this on her back. And even if I stroke her belly while she's asleep, she doesn't mind at all. She stays fast asleep. She is so adorable. So my name is Lucy Nathanson and not only am I mum to Mia, this adorable kitten, but I'm also a child therapist specialising in selective mutism. So I thought I would show you some absolutely adorable videos of Mia. Here she is having fun, having her playtime. And I've got quite a few videos of Mia and I thought everyone loves a good cat video and Mia is so cute. <laughs> so I thought, why don't I share these videos with you? And while you watch her being so, so cute, I can teach you a bit about selective mutism, the condition that I specialize in. Now, October is Selective Mutism Awareness Month. So I would like as many people as possible to learn about selective mutism. Do you know a child who can talk to their parents, let's say, but they're unable to talk at school or they're unable to talk to extended family members? Maybe they can't talk to their aunt or uncle or cousins or grandparents, or maybe they're unable to answer a question from a stranger. So there's a big misconception that these children are choosing not to talk or they're being stubborn by not talking. That is definitely not the case. And when we're learning about selective mutism, that should be the first thing we learn, that children are not choosing not to talk. It's rather an anxiety disorder, meaning that they just can't talk in some situations. It's too terrifying for them just like a phobia. If you imagine a phobia, and selective mutism is compared to a phobia of talking, if you imagine a phobia, when you're faced with that phobia, it's really terrifying and your body responds to being faced with that phobia. So your heart rate may increase, you might start sweating, your muscles tense up. And for children with selective mutism, their throat muscles actually tense up when they're in a situation where they're expected to talk. So children will often say that their throat feels blocked and the words just can't come out. The starting point when learning about selective mutism is to understand that it's an anxiety disorder and children, they're not choosing not to talk. They really want to talk, but it's just too scary for them. And actually, the longer they haven't spoken in a particular place or with particular person, the harder it is for them to start because they then build an association between when I'm with that person I can't talk and it's never personal. That's another really important point, it's never personal. They often really love the person that they can't talk to. They might love their aunt or their grandparents or their uncle but they haven't yet been able to talk to their aunt, uncle, grandparents or whoever it might be and therefore it just feels scary and impossible for them to start to talk to this person. So there's me and Mia <laughs> and in the next video you'll see her waving goodbye to us. There she goes. So I really hope that you've learned something new about selective mutism today and if you'd like to learn more about selective mutism please have a look at my website called confidentchildren.co.uk and please go straight to my Facebook page called Confident Children Selective Mutism Therapy because I regularly share a lot of information about selective mutism as well as more <laughs> images, pictures of Mia that I'm sure you'll love. So please go over there and have a look around and also please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here and learning about selective mutism today. I hope you found it useful and have a lovely rest of the day.